Okay, this is part two. Getting back to that. Okay, so 2012 was just a halfway point. All right, it was just a halfway point in um, this shift, okay? So what happened in 2012, though, there was this big um, oh, this solar, and it was so amazing because it was the first time that the Pleiades had came by the moon and Mars or something like that, and it was a really big deal. Um, it was the halfway point singling that we had made it halfway. Now, what came to my mind all the time was two years, 2030, because that was the end of the shift. But I was also told by my guides to watch out for 2025, that that could be a really important year, a really turning point year in our evolution as far as making the shift into the new earth happens. Um, so... You know, he could actually be talking about it coming back again there. And it just came to me to play that. There's a second part to it too, but we don't need to get into it. So let's go ahead and get into how this is going to work out, okay? So when this shift happens, one of the things, let me get my notes here if I can read my chicken scratch. I appreciate everybody being patient. I am so nervous. Plus, I had to, you know, do a part two to this, damn. Um, not everyone is going to make it. That doesn't mean they're going to die or go to hell. They're just not going to make it into that timeline. And we kind of deal with it on a little level here. It's like I had, I think I was mentioning to David one time on one of his, you know, posts about this. That, you know, somebody had mentioned one time that it's kind of like this. You know, you don't, you have a relationship with somebody and you guys don't really, you know, get on anymore. Don't have anything in common anymore. Just don't have anything to say, you know. You just don't talk, don't see each other. That person really doesn't exist to you anymore. That's kind of what this is going to be like, yet it's going to be kind of trippy because they're really not going to be available to be in your reality, I don't think. Or maybe they will. Maybe you'll be able to reach them through other means. We'll have to see. But they just won't be in your reality, in our reality as a collective. Okay, because it's going to take all of us as a collective to make this happen. And I think... 2025 we're really going to start springing into action and maybe we can make this thing happen before 2030 i don't like to get hung up on dates except for the few exceptions when i do you know sometimes they are important but everybody was mistaken 2012 for 2030 i didn't i just figured it was a halfway shift because i was lucky enough to get that download um so this new earth will happen and, you know, and for those that don't make it, we just show them love from afar and all that, right? You know, and no judgment or anything. And maybe, you know, a lot of us have lived hundreds of lifetimes. Who knows? Some of these may be new souls that are just learning. I have to really be patient with people and realize that. My soon-to-be ex-wife, who actually will always be my twin flame, her and I were talking the other night. And she was telling me to just be patient with them, Larry. Larry, you need to be patient and calm down. Maybe they've only lived a couple lifetimes. You're an old soul. You've lived hundreds. I'm like, yeah, I know. So this new earth, okay, let's kind of get into like the logistics of it, right? You know, it's going to take a little bit of adjusting. But when everything's settled in, kind of, this is going to kind of be how it goes. Every person will, at the very least, say you're a single person, you're by yourself, whatever. Every single, just even a single person is going to have like a, a modest three-bedroom house, not an apartment house, a little bit of land, you know, um, neighbors in the distance, but, you know, have their own little lot, their own little land, and, you know, bigger families will have bigger houses and stuff like that. But what everybody will have, everybody's going to have free energy because we're going to put those crystal towers back around the planet like we did in Atlantis and Lemuria, okay? There was 8 to 12 of them, 150-foot crystal towers stationed around the planet that powered the whole damn planet, okay? So that's how they got their energy. Okay, so fine, that's going to happen. We're going to get off oil, okay? We're going to get off oil. There's pipelines, oil pipelines that run through every continent of this planet. 
okay, we're going to get those pipelines cleaned out. You know what we're going to do with them then? We're going to use some of our geniuses to use it to desalinate ocean water. So we have, and other techniques as well, but on a mass scale, desalinate ocean water. So everybody has an abundance of that. Okay, I covered housing. Um, the, the way the government is kind of going to work, I don't like using that term because we will all be the government. There's not going to be a president. There's not going to be like that. Yes, we may have elders that we look to that love us. And, you know, we'll have people like I was, I think, saying to one of the other members of the group. You know, we'll have like people in the community that are doctors, that are scientists, that are spiritual leaders, holistic um advisors and stuff like that and those people will be looked up to by a lot of people but in a society like that those people will have more gratitude for being able to serve you than you have towards them it'll be about 50 50 but trust me they'll be just as happy to help you we're all going to be each other's students and we're all going to be each other's teachers we will follow our lead sometimes we will follow your lead sometimes um Technology. I'm going to be all over the place a little bit here. Let's hear. Uh, yeah. Okay. One other thing, too, that I want to touch on. I'll get back to that. One other date that I was given. And it's kind of funny because, again, I was having all these downloads and other people would get them. This was one thing I got that Bashar got. Um, You know, and I heard it about a week, years ago before he said it. And I was kind of really disappointed when I heard it from my guides. And then him confirming it. So what I got was that, and of course these times are fluid, they could change. What I got was on the path we were on there that it would be somewhere between 2048 and 2052 in earth years before we were actually let to become, let in to become a galactical society and engage with the people. There are trillions of planets in the unit, just in our small galaxy out there that we don't know about that have humans on us, on it, ascended human beings from higher dimensions. I'm not talking about all the different kind of creatures out there in the universe, and there are, but humans are everywhere in the damn universe. They just, they just don't, you know, they want us to evolve. They, they you know, even though they're more technologically evolved than us, we kind of scare them a little bit, you know, still, and I don't blame them. So, but in the meantime, it's also going to be a little bit of a dimensional shift. No, we're not going to go floating like LSD into the fifth dimension. No, it's going to be an upper fourth dimensional shift. So, the, and I laid this out in my video I did this morning or my audio about multi, about the different dimensions. The fourth dimension is, upper fourth dimension is the last dimension where time exists. The difference there is, though, is people aren't past trip and future trip, and everything is perpetually in the now moment about joy. Yes, they still use the clock a little bit for, you know, kind of funny things here and now. I got to go, you know, hey, it's time for me to go to the store. Hey, it's, you know, getting about time to do dinner, whatever, you know, things that, you know, you just kind of use it as a guide for. But the majority of the time, when you're operating out of upper 40, you're just constantly doing the right thing in the now moment. And when you do that and are conscious in the now moment and doing the right thing, every now moment after that just takes care of itself. You know what I mean? It just takes care of itself. Technology. Bingo. That's a big one. Okay? And we might have to do a third part to this. Damn it. I'm going to have to talk quick. Technology. People. Oh, there's going to be a universal income too, by the way. Okay. It's just how it's going to be. It's going to be abundance. And, you know, there are people that will want to work. There's going to be people that can't work. They're just going to do what they can do. And that's fine. You won't need a lot of money, but, you know, it'll be there. Okay. Technology people, listen, we also have to get past this scare, fear story about AI. Yes, it's a scary, and I'll cuss a little bit, son of a bitch when it's controlled by evil, greedy globalists and shit. Yes, of course it is. Every technology has a yin and a yang about it. Now, could you imagine AI in the hands of nothing but loving, honest people that had everybody else's best interest at heart? 
at the same time were very smart in the brain so they weren't idiots. AI is going to help us evolve a decade by every six months that we live in this reality. And you know how, you know, okay, there's these scare stories that these robots are going to turn into these science fiction like human beings eventually. They're going to get that smart. These computers are going to start talking to each other. Bullshit. This is how we're going to stop that. We're going to constantly be monitoring, updating the software with IT geniuses. Okay, and the moment we're going to prevent it from happening. But listen, the moment if that ever happened, anything goes cross-eyed, we're going to do a preemptive strike. It's the only time we're going to get violent. We're going to take that computer robot out and we're going to put it out of its misery and cremate it. We ain't screwing around. We're going to be constantly fiddling around with it just for security measures. Okay, we're going to use it um, for all kinds of great things. Um, as far as going to space, okay, we're going to be kind of like this cool hippie commune advanced, like yet space traveling community. It's going to be so weird. It's going to be like all the psychedelics you could ever take only, only doing it sober. Um, the first kind of living in space, I really do believe. And I think some civilizations have these. In fact, I saw one, one time go through the air. It was mind blowing. These kind of, you know, these biodomes. There's these floating biodome cities that a lot of civilizations will use when they go out, you know, like go out to sea or to space. Um, we will have those, okay? That will be the start of it. Now, eventually will come... How do I put this? Eventually, and this is... God, man. See, this is the thing with technology. It could really speed up. But like, say we were just doing it at the rate we are now. Later on in this century, we could probably start or getting close to having planets terraformed. Maybe another planet out there terraformed. That means have an atmosphere created for it, give it enough time to develop, have running water, you know, the natural evolution of a planet. We're going to have to find a clean way to do it, though. The only known way to make it try to happen now and it's pretty crude, would be to use a bunch of atomic bombs on one. They, they thought about it with Mars a long time ago, if they ever needed to do it. So, also another thing that our, you know, our genius, um, geniuses in our community will be working on in that field, we're going to be working on learning how to use interdimensional space travel. Space is vast, it's endless, we know that. But these other civilizations have learned to use wormholes, to use portals, kind of like shortcuts through the freeway, right? Um, to get to different parts of the, you know, the galaxy. There are, there are probably races out there that are so ascended they can just think it and be somewhere else. You know what I mean? Some have to travel through space in more um, mechanical um, type of equipment, you know, like... Um, Ship engines powered by really high crystal technology, you know, at the lowest form out there. Then you get into, um, man, you just get into like um, a non-solid, higher dimensional type ship. There's all kinds of different scenarios out there. And I'm only talking about our galaxy people and it's the youngest in the damn universe. I mean, the Arcturians are the oldest humans in our universe. They're a quintillion years old, and that's nothing. A quintillion years old when they were humans like us. It's a long fucking time. But some other, and I talked about this in another meditation. I did this for years. I could never get who the human beings were that settled and seeded them in our universe. Because we know they seeded the Lyrans who became the Pleiadians. You know? Just like the Pleiadians help seed us a lot of our DNAs from them. So who seeded the Arcturians? Maybe we'll figure that out someday. But even who seeded that that race, that race, that race. So you can see that the youngest galaxy in the goddamn universe with endless galaxies, our oldest race is a quintil, not a billion, million, trillion, quadrillion, a quintillion years old. So it just goes to show you that time is so long that it's endless and you can see where it really doesn't exist. You know, it's really the higher up the dimensions you get, it's all at once. 
I did a channeling years ago. I used to use another name besides Larry Locken. I was also, I had an alternate account and an alternate um, name I did channelings under. I was called the Looney Lyran. L-O-O-N-Y-L-Y-R-A-N. I'm not sure I had an E in Looney, but you know, if you want to check him out sometime, he's out there. I still, ha he's still on Facebook, but I just don't have the password to get into that account anymore, nor do I want to screw with it. But if you ever run across him, that's me. So I'm getting about close to running out of time here. We can do more. So we covered the energy. Now, healthcare. Healthcare is going to be a big deal, but we're going to take care of each other. Okay, shit, I got to move quick. This is important. There is going to be, there's not going to be any crime in the society. But we're going to have people that still have addiction issues, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that no other generation of kids ever comes up having to use a chemical drug. We'll do that by keeping them healthy, keeping them excited, and not making it a temptation. We're going to have an intermittent, intermittent period of time, though, where we have, we have people that are hooked on substances. How we're going to deal with that? Well, there's already medicines out there that can help help cure them. You know, there's Suboxone and stuff for heroin. There's medicine for alcohol. You can use Suboxone for meth too. Cocaine's a tough one. God, thank God it was the one thing I never had a problem with. I tried it three times when I was a teenager and I couldn't stand it. It just numbed my throat and face. But I had friends that lost their lives to it. So what we're going to have to do to them is like Portugal did. They completely legalized drugs, sold it for what it actually cost to make. So a $50 bag of drugs is actually 50 cents. Okay, so we're just going to have to let them, you know, leave them alone. Let them have their 50 cent bag of drugs a day till we figure it out. There's not going to be any robbing because they're going to have all the other needs they have. Okay, they'll just need to get 50 cents a day, which is nothing. And they're not going to rob anybody. Who, who would you rob in that kind of society? What would you get? Who the hell would you sell it to? Everybody's got everything. Look, I'm talking really fast because I got about five seconds. I'm going to run out of tape. All right, I'm me.